Welcome back, Cabrini College. I hope everyone had a great summer. This is Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Bethany Biggenho, and it's great to be back. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Here's your news now. Last week, first-year students moved into their residence halls. Let's hear from Jimmy to learn more. On Thursday, August 23rd, Cabrini College welcomed the class of 2016 onto campus. Resident assistants, orientation leaders, and staff members volunteered their time and effort to make move-in day as smooth as possible for the first-year students. I want to be a communications and English double major, and Cabrini really helped me decide that because like, I've heard about the program, I've had friends that go here, and just it just felt like a perfect fit just because of how the campus felt. And it was definitely my first choice coming here. I thought at first hand the people were very friendly and uh, truly did exceed my expectations location wise and also uh, the faculty and staff. They really helped me out, uh, settle in, made my stay more comfortable and so far I'm excited to uh, meet more people and start classing. I'm a curious, this is my first year here working as an area coordinator at Cabrini College and the energy is great with the first year students moving in. They're really excited to meet their new roommates and everyone else that they're going to be living with on their community. Um, today orientation has an extensive schedule planned for them. They'll be meeting, doing icebreakers with the people in their community. They'll have floor meetings tonight at 630 with the resident assistants and then tonight they will be meeting with um, they have a hypnotist, hypnotist that's coming onto campus, so there's some great activities planned for them tonight. After the annual matriculation ceremony, students made their way to the Commons for dinner with their families. During the picnic, several of the orientation leaders and resident assistants broke out into a flash mob. Here are some of the highlights. For exclusive video of the entire flash mob as it unfolded, head to our YouTube channel and search Flash Mob. For location, I'm James Kroll. Jumpstart your school season by going into Philly this Labor Day weekend for the Made in America Music Festival headlined by Jay-Z and Pearl Jam. Construction workers have been hard at work putting together a four-stage performance area. If you're going to the concert, make sure to send location your photos. We're putting together a slideshow of everyone's concert photos. Send your best photo with the creative caption to locationpr at gmail.com. On Lancaster Avenue this weekend, Painting with a Twist is offering a fun-filled night out in the town. The special offer is only $35 for two hours and $45 for three hours. Don't forget, it's a place to hang out with your friends, bring your own wine, and create some art. Looking for a great three-course meal for 20 bucks? Better make your reservations now for Mainline Restaurant Week during the, first, the last week of September. Some of the best restaurants in the area offer discount dining, great for college students. Check out the list of places on MainlineRestaurantWeek.com. If you're really gorged yourself at a restaurant week and need to get a perspective on healthy eating, here's some advice from the General Manager of Dining Services, Drew Neiman. We decided uh, to bring a dietitian to campus uh, due to the fact that uh, over the more recent years, we've seen a lot more students and faculty and staff members on our campus uh, having dietary concerns, whether it be allergies or just uh, paying closer attention to uh, their food intake, uh, that we thought it would be a good idea to uh, bring one of the dietitians that we have available to us within Sodexo. Her name is Sue Hurd, and in previous years, many, many previous years, she's been working uh, primarily in the Lehigh Valley area with, with college campuses up there and, and uh, really we had the opportunity to to get her to come on board with us here in the Philadelphia region um, with our schools down here and not only myself but my counterparts at the other schools in the area all thought it was a great idea you know it's something that's really very much needed uh, these days so uh, she's going to be joining us officially on September 21st uh, here and she'll be available to us in the, in the Cavs Corner. She'll be setting up a little t table, kind of a meet and greet session and setting up appointments with students who feel the need that they want to see her. 
I think having a dietitian on campus is a great idea for um, especially the athletes. Everyone's trying to stay fit for the season, especially preseason and the season, and also for the freshmen because everyone knows the freshman 15. Me, personally, I'm very unhealthy, and I think me seeing her is a very good idea. I think it's a great thing that um, she's on campus now. I think um, everybody should use her because I know if when I, whenever I meet her, I know I'm going to use her. If there's any time during the course of the year where a student or faculty or staff member feels a need that they would like to take advantage of uh, speaking with Sue um, about any of their dietary concerns, uh, the best way to go about doing that would be to contact me directly. Depending on what it is, it could just be a phone call where they speak with Sue on the phone or interact via, uh, via email. Uh, but if they would like the one-on-one -on -one meetings, I kind of know what the schedule is going to be in the upcoming times where she is on campus. Um, and all of these services are available free of charge. That was your trip around the block. Now here's Rob with your latest Eagles, Phillies, and Cavalier updates. All Cavalier athletic teams will begin their first season under new athletic director Brad Koch, who joins the Cabrini family after 15 years with Philadelphia University. Cavalier Athletics have not begun just yet as teams are just starting to wrap up their preseasons. Regular season play is expected to begin this weekend and next week. Speaking of the preseason, the women's volleyball team has been announced as the number one team in the CSAC preseason volleyball poll after an undefeated season last year that saw them capture their third consecutive CSAC title. In Philadelphia sports, the Phillies currently sit 16 and a half games back in the NL East and 10 games back in the wild card hunt following a 9-5 loss in 10 innings to the New York Mets on Tuesday night. The Phillies will conclude their series against the Mets on Thursday, then will travel to, for a six-game road trip against Atlanta and Cincinnati. The Eagles will conclude preseason play on Thursday night when the New York Jets pay a visit to Lincoln Financial Field. The Eagles are currently riding on a 3-0 preseason record thanks in part to the stellar quarterbacking of 2012 draft pick Nick Foles. The Eagles also trimmed their roster down to 75 players on Monday after cutting wide receiver Jamel Hamler. Offensive guard Mike Gibson was placed on injured reserve with a hip injury. Both defensive tackle Mike Patterson and offensive tackle Jason Peters were placed on the non-football illness and non-football injury list respectively as Patterson continues to rehab from brain surgery and Peters continues rehab work on his torn Achilles tendon. The Eagles roster must be at the 53-player limit by 9 p.m. on Friday. In other Eagles news, former running back Brian Westbrook signed a one-day contract to officially retire as an Eagle on Wednesday. Westbrook was beloved by Burroughs fans far and wide, and his number 36 jersey is still seen in the stands of Lincoln Financial Field to this day. That's all I got for this week in sports. Be sure to tune in next week for the results of the start of Cavalier Athletics, as well as an update on the Phillies' playoff hopes and the end of the Eagles' preseason. Now back to Valerie. Sadness strikes all over the nation as we say goodbye to American hero Neil Armstrong. Armstrong died at the age of 82 due to heart surgery complications. His journey took flight when he became the first man to walk on the moon and is still being honored for this achievement as he recently received the Congressional Gold Medal Award. Later this month, there will be a 50th anniversary reunion where the crew members of Apollo 11 will remember their following commander. Tragedy continues as 58-year-old Jeffrey Johnson shot his colleague, Stephen Ercolino, dead right outside the Empire State Building earlier this week. Johnson had recently lost his job as a former clothing designer. According to friends and colleagues, Ercolino and Johnson were seen arguing. The arguing soon came to an end when Johnson pulled out a gun and shot Ercolino right in the head in front of the Empire State Building. Johnson was taken down by police who arrived quickly to the scene. In addition to Ercolino, nine others were shot, but none were, injured, were, none were seriously injured. President Barack Obama has declared a state of emergency in Louisiana as Hurricane Isaac hit the Gulf Coast this week. The Category 2 hurricane threatens to make landfall in Louisiana and Florida. This storm is one category less than sister Hurricane Katrina. Isaac has already killed 20 people in its path in Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Due to the storm, the Republican Party has delayed its national convention as they focus on disaster prevention efforts instead. That was your news across the nation. Now let's go to Christine for more on the Katie Holmes and Tom Cruise divorce. The divorce is final between Katie Holmes and Tom Cruise. So how much cash will Katie get to walk away with? Actually, not that much. Sources familiar with the case tell TMZ that due to Tom's ironclad prenuptial agreement, when Katie chose to leave the marriage, she was shut out of his $250 million estate. 
Katie will only get child support payments up to $400,000 a year and continue until daughter Surrey turns 18. Well, Lindsay Lohan is back at it. TMZ is reporting that Lohan, now a formal suspect in the theft of the $100,000 worth of watches and sunglasses that were stolen from the Hollywood Hills home of Sam McGid last week. Sam called the LAPD to report the missing jewelry after a group including Lindsay partied at his home. With the annual MTV Music Awards right around the corner, who can we expect to see perform? This year, the Staples Center will house one of the most multi-talented stages ever. Singer Demi Lovato will join the 2012 pre-show along with chart-topping DJ and mega-producer Calvin Harris. The 2012 MTV Video Music Awards will air live from the Staples Center in Los Angeles on Thursday, September 6th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Now back to Bethany for your trip around the world. According to NASA, the Arctic sea ice has reached its record low. Warming causes are due to human activity such as pollution and the cutting down of forests. Scientists say this has caused a drastic change in the environment. If the ice continues to melt, some threats include death of wildlife, change of weather in the UK, and even an overheat in the planet. In other news, a military helicopter was shot down by Syrian rebels. Video footage caught images of the burning helicopter and rebels up in arms. According to rebels, the attack was caused out of a retaliation on a government-forced massacre, which occurred earlier this year. Overall, 37 people were killed as the result of the helicopter attacks in Syria. Over in Germany, a sports competition went horrifically wrong after an official was accidentally killed by a thrown javelin. According to local media, the 74-year-old official went to measure a throw but was speared in the throat before the javelin hit the ground. Immediately after, the competition was called off. The 15-year-old com competitor who accidentally hit the official is now seeking psychological help. Thanks for staying tuned with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Bethany Biggenhill. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Let's have a great year, Cabrini.